microscopy and the name itself it is self explanatory micron so it is a small and also the scopes to look to look so in that case to look the small objects without the aid of um, human eye or a naked eye how we can see the specimens okay so microscopy is the field of using microscope to view the objects and the areas of the objects that cannot be seen by the naked eye okay so if i say that some vijay is present here so immediately you are able to stand up i am able to see you that is with my naked eye i am able to see you so if it is a very small bacteria we are not able to see that in that case the external aid is necessary so for that we are using the microscope so the study of microscopes are called as microscopy so it is a science of investigating small objects using the microscopes so it is a very good field and if you know nook and corner of the microscopy so it is very easy to even become an entrepreneur okay so there are lot of biological specimens have to be dissected and find out what are all the variations in anatomy or what are the structural modifications occurs in that what kind of organisms are present in the environment so everything it can be dissected out with the help of different kind of microscopes so in that they divide this microscopy into four branches that is to observe the object if you are using the light as a source then we are calling it as optical microscopy then electrons are embedded to focus a particular object that is the electron microscopy or you are using a probe probe means certain sequence or certain material is used attached with a particular tag and if that particular tag is present then we are saying that this object is present so based on that you are able to scan the probe so it is scanning probe microscopy then the last advance is the atomic force microscopy so we are seeing at the molecule level at the atom level at the atom level how the electrons protons and the neutrons are constituted in that specimen so that can be analyzed with the help of this atomic force microscopy okay so we will see one by one in this class okay and in general if you are measuring a particular object the metric units are used so in that you start with a meter okay so in that so we call it as 1/10th of a meter is decimeter but generally we want to use that as decimeter in a common measurements immediately after a meter we are going for centimeter okay 100th of a meter is centimeter okay then after that 1000th of a meter is millimeter then 1 in 1 lakh sorry 1 in 1 million it is a micrometer the micron is the unit used okay micrometer one followed by six zeros so one in one million so if it is of million there should be an equivalent another one one in one trillion okay so in that case we call it as nano okay so 10 to the power of minus 9 10 to the power of minus 6 is micron okay so 10 to the power of minus 3 is millimeter okay so like that we are using the metric units 
to based on the size of the objects whether we are observing at the centimeter scale or measuring at the centimeter scale at the millimeter scale or micrometer scale or nanometer scales so measuring at the centimeter scale you can take a scale measure the viewable objects with our eyes okay so if it is not possible then we have to keep it under a microscope and then we are measuring them okay so that the micrometers are useful okay so up to this is a 15.3 micron so micrometers so in that case the length of a bacteria or a width of the bacteria or length of the flagellum in a bacteria so everything can be measured in terms of micrometer okay and if you go little bit advanced in the images if you want to see a very fine structure so you can measure with the help of nanometer also okay even the advances came it for picometer also okay another three zeros you can add but mainly up to nanometer you can use this so what are the the biological organisms what are the examples for that for example if it a tap worm or any worm you measure you can measure in meter then the another one centimeter you can measure a diameter of a mushroom cap anything you can write the example centimeter with the centimeter scale then millimeter the diameter of a bacterial colony you are taking a petri plate you are inoculating with a particular medium and in that you are growing a bacteria the bacterial colony is growing you want to to measure and that is in case of millimeter okay then if it is a micrometer so the diameter of the red blood cells okay so that comes under the micrometer that is red blood cells you have you have to observe under a microscope and then see that observe under the electron microscope and see the virus particles so how much nanometer they are measuring okay so that comes for the nanometer okay so the first microscope was invented by a father and a son okay so have you discussed anything science with your father anyone in this class science with your father anyone raise your hand good then something okay so the son is playing with some material and the father is observing it very carefully and then he found that something different in that and they are able to see that there is some magnification in the view of that object then they thought that so this can be used for studying the various objects okay so like that the hand son jansen they are the father and son and they they are from netherlands they invented the first microscope even though it was not um, much publicized immediately if you say the microscope means antony van leven hook is the answer for everything father of microscopy like that but before that even with the in 1580 to 1638 these two members in their home they are able to play with a instrument and to magnify the object but they are not published so if it is not shown to others it is not possible to record it then next to that the antony van leven hook is the inventor of the microscope first so he is he made, made a simple microscope that could magnify about 275 x magnification and he published see that so once you record the observation and record it in a scientific journals then only your discovery or invention or innovation everything will be taken care of so like that in 1683 he published that paper and he he told that with a simple microscope it is possible to see the objects to the magnification of 200x okay 
so this is the claim of antony van leeuwenhoek so he is the inventor of the microscope okay so what is the simple microscope so one lens you can easily absorb okay if you want to if you go to a palmist okay reading your various rays okay then immediately what he will say with the help of the magnification 10x magnification he is able to see your palm and say that you will come very good in your life like that isn't it so just if you are saying that it is a 10x magnification lens or sometimes they will use 5x also but the same 10x lens are used in a small instrument okay in that a small lens is put it at the top so bottom there is a stage in that you can keep the specimen and observe it instead of keeping it as a handle so the lens is fixed at the top in this stage you can keep the specimen and observe it so that comes under the simple microscope 10x magnification so any objects so for example if you want to see a ant take the ant keep it in the stage okay on a slide and observe that observe its antenna observe its head observe it observe their eyes so like that it is possible that is the first one simple but later what they thought so it is not enough because he told antony van leeuwenhoek himself told 200x magnification is possible so in that case another lens to be used so here the 10x another 10x if you are saying that you will get 100x magnification so here the ip is 10x objective 20x you are able to get it as 200x magnification so in that case how best we can increase the magnification with the help of many lenses so in a compound so it is called as compound microscope so we can call it as simple compound microscope some of them they call it as simple compound microscope but it is misnomer you can call it as compound microscope with two lenses instead of a single lens okay one is the eyepiece another one is in objective okay so all other parts are known to you i don't want to explain i will go to the next slide is it okay high power objective that is 4x 10x then you are going for 20x or 40x or oil immersion objective as 100x okay then clip stage condenser iris mirror everything it is there okay then what are the general principles of microscopy how we are able to get the magnification how we can resolve the objects okay the first one is the wavelength of radiation okay so in the wavelength of radiation is it a visible wavelength or next to that whether it is infrared or ultraviolet or beyond that so generally within the visible wavelength only we are making the light to pass through refract it and then it uh, makes the image the inverted image you can see or otherwise with the two lenses you can see as such the image this is the common microscopy principle isn't it so the wavelength of radiation is most important okay in the electromagnetic spectrum in the visible light it is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer so that is the color what we are calling it as vibgr isn't it that vibgr color so this is a visible light so uv light also used in certain special microscope but what we discussed in the light microscope is only because light have electromagnetic spectrum that light have that prism has 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer so if you pass through a prism it is refracted or that the pathway is deflected and then you can converge them to a one focus and then observe the object okay so this is increasing the wavelength for example if it is you are using the radio waves or television so it is up to going 10 power 3 meter whereas 
10 power minus 12 also you can use up to gamma rays. So, whenever you are increasing the resolving power, so you can use different kind of wavelength. So, then what is the resolving power? So, before that, the second point in the principles of microscopy, it is a refraction and image formation with the light. Okay, just to see that the light you are focusing from the bottom, that light is passing through an aperture and enters inside. So, it is refracted in a glass. That glass only the concave, con sorry, convex lens. Okay, so the specimen is kept, convex lens is kept in between, then there is a focal point and it enlarges the shape, size of the object and show as a reverse image. This is for single. Then if you are using another one, the same thing, it goes for a normal position. Okay, you are getting the magnification as well as you are observing the normal image of a specimen what it is kept on the stage. Okay, so the refraction and the image is another principle. The first one is wavelength. The second one is refraction and image. What is the third one? Resolution or resolving power. Okay. So, it is a refractive index. Okay, it, de it depends upon refractive index. So, what is that? So, it is an ability of the optical system to form the distinguishable images of the objects separated by small angular distances. Okay, so you just uh, take your pen, make different dots in your paper. Okay, just uh, make a dot. Closer dot, then wider dot. How best your eyes are able to resolve the two different dots? If they are widely spaced, you are able to observe it clearly. The resolving power is high. But if you are very closer, you can't distinguish between the two dots. So, in that case, how best you are able to resolve the distance between the two dots with the help of the particular refractive index, then that is the resolution. Okay? Resolving magnification is different from resolution. Magnification just you are increasing the size of the image. Whereas here resolving power, if there are two objects close by, how best you are able to distinguish the, the distance between the two objects. Okay? So, in the single object itself, for example, if you are observing the tail with the, the spermatozoa, the tail and uh, acrosome, how they are present and if you are able to differentiate that particular uh, membrane, then that is the resolving power. Okay? So, the resolution limit of a microscope is the shortest distance between two nearby objects when the images formed by the microscope are properly differentiated. So, two closer images, how best they are differentiated, that gives the resolving power. So, that has a formula. So, 1.22 into wavelength divided by numerical aperture. Okay. So, this numerical aperture is that hole okay, through which only you are putting that. The resolving power depends on the aperture as well as the wavelength of the light. So, by the formula itself, you know the wavelength is an important one. Okay. Then, the second one is the, what is the size of the aperture. Okay. So, this is the resolution. Okay. Everybody should know what is the difference between magnification and resolution. Okay. Or resolving power. Okay. What are the limits of resolution? Okay. So, you start with 1 meter up to 0 0.01 nanometer, there are different objects are shown here in this picture and in that you can see that with unaided eye, so you can see even from 1 millimeter very clearly, even less than 1 millimeter also sometimes you can observe it. Okay? So, that is with unaided eye. 
then you can go for compound light microscope between 200 nanometer to 10 millimeter okay the last one you can see that compound light microscope so it is for the 200 nanometer to 10 nanometer press scanning electron microscope 0.4 nanometer to 1 millimeter then TEM transmission electron microscope is 0 0.07 nanometer to 100 micron so which one is resolution is good transmission or scanning resolution dissolving power if you go smaller objects to be differentiated transmission is good isn't it it is for nanometer to micron here it is nanometer to millimeter okay so here the tem is so good then scanning tunneling microscope that is 0 0.01 nanometer to 10 nanometer it is more precise to differentiate the two different objects so this is that through this so see that the atomic force microscopy what we are saying the atoms are able to be differentiated in that okay then it comes to the amino acid level or it comes to 1 nanometer diameter of the DNA or if you want to observe the protein it comes under the 10 nanometer whereas the ribosome as a organelle if you wanted to see so 10 to 20 nanometer you can see then viruses it is around 50 nanometer scales you can see then typical bacteria you can see 1 micron okay then organelles like a mitochondria and chloroplast are little bit bigger so it comes under the 5 nanometer 5 micron or 7 microns then human red blood cells also coming under that 8 or 9 micron then the large protozoan euglena you can see that it is around near 1 millimeter okay or it may be of 500 to 600 micron then if you want to see a different insects so it is more than 10 millimeter if it is a grasshopper or locust or some other insects it's a big in size it may be more than chicken egg so what is the diameter around 60 nanom uh, sorry millimeter okay so like that you can observe the various thing the limit of resolution varies depending upon the power of the microscope is it clear the last row okay so we will go to the next slide the third important principle in microscopy is the contrast i will say the last row two girls sitting one is wearing the uh, white color and another one is wearing the red color so it is of quite contrast am i right so easily we can identify there are two persons if there are two persons are wearing the same color then to differentiate it is little bit hard same thing here at a different thickness at a different diameter level or the closeness we are we have to find out which object is differentiated from another object at what closeness okay how to create the contrast so the differences in intensity between the two objects or between the object and the background if the background is dark if your specimen is passing through the light you can easily observe dark field microscopy okay or if the thickness as like a face you are making create one is thin other angle is thick so easily you can differentiate thinner specimen with the thicker specimen that is possible with the help of face contrast microscope so based on this the resolution is determined besides that if you are able to stain with the different dyes okay so whatever you have seen all the ts of root or stem or bacteria everything it is stained in different colors so that easily you can observe you can easily give from the white background you are observing a black sorry blue colored one or green colored one so it is possible to contrastingly see that how contrast they are okay merging sometimes you will use the powerpoint slides which are merged with one another even i can't read from here this is a white background with black letters easily everybody can see 
but if you are making some other background light uh, bluish background with the black color it's not possible to observe isn't it same thing contrast is important so use of light that is in phase increases the contrast different phases the light is moving to that so one is easily making the object into a thick and another one thinner or different planar surface so that you can observe in the different thickness so this is used for studying the living cells phase contrast microscope okay then bright field microscope as we discussed there are different types of microscope bright field microscope it is simple as like i told it is a single magnifying lens okay leven hook used this to observe the microorganisms okay so this is the first then second one is compound series of lenses for magnification how many lenses now we are using in a compound microscope what you are observing in a class two, two. isn't it two okay so light passes through the specimen into the objective lens then you can increase the power resolution also using the oil immersion what is the principle we will see later then it has one or two ocular lenses okay total magnification equal to magnification of objective lens into magnification of ocular lens okay 10 into 10 100 10 into 20 200 10 into 40 400 10 into 100 thousand that is the maximum possible in the compound compound microscope most have the condenser lens why need a condenser lens to avoid the dust to avoid the thing and also focus the light to move through a particular orifice okay so for that direct light through the specimen okay this is the way how the image is produced so compound microscope are easily portable affordable and easy to use and it goes up to the magnification of 1000x okay and the light source comes from the bottom and passes through the microscopic lenses and makes fully visible okay it is view the object at the cellular level also it is possible this is the one what you are using okay next so this is the whole parts already you have seen fine adjusting knob base then coarse focusing knob illuminator diaphragm condenser or stage objective lens then arm body ocular lens or ips everything it is given here is it clear okay so here based on the number of ocular lens we enter monocular microscope binocular microscope trinocular microscope okay why why what is the need for trinocular microscope with the two eyes we are observing in binocular what is the need for trinocular so in the another one they will attach the camera okay they can take photographs or they can attach directly to a computer so in the computer you can see the digital images of that what you are observing in the slides okay so next so what we are saying in the higher end resolution the 1000x we are saying that the oil should be kept so the rod oil or some oil should be kept for 100x okay so how if there is no oil the refracted light rays lost to the lens whereas when you keep the oil more light enters the lens this is the principle okay you can see that that the refraction on the both the sides doesn't occur because of the oil you are putting a drop immersion oil here the in the in this layer you can see an immersion oil so more light enters the lens whereas here without the oil glass with the cover slip so here the refractive light is deflected on the sideways so it is not focused towards the lens okay then you can see it this is the principle for oil immersion okay then what is the stereoscopic microscope then 
it has a light source on the top to illuminate the specimen light source generally what we are having at the bottom we are putting the small lens isn't it that uh, receive the light okay or you make the different uh, modes of making a light source so here to illuminate the specimen the stereoscopic mic microscope have the light source at the top causing the reflection on the microscope lens so here the maximum magnification is up to 50x so the light passes through the microscope tubes create the image which provides three dimensional image also and improvement of the flat image which is found in the compound microscope okay so where it is used everything it is generally what stage is at the top am i right in our microscope common compound microscope here the stage is at the bottom all the adjustments are at the top okay so for dissection so you can keep it in a petri plate and dissect the eyes or any of the things for insects or if you are dissecting a particular worm or dissecting a bacteria so you can easily take a pollen of a flower dissect it and observe under the microscope so it is a used for dissection even for the coin appraisal or gem mineral study in the geology the microscopes are used in plenty to study the structure of that minerals okay and also in entomology study about the insects okay and so generally if you go to a shop where they are wrist watches are getting repaired okay what they are doing first they will use a single lens keeping on their eyes and see that and if it is not possible then they have a microscope like that and keep it the keep the entire circuit in the microscope and see that with a small pin rotate it and observe the different parts where the defects are present okay so the stereoscopic microscope you can see that eyepiece lens and the objective lens and the light source so the unrefracted or hollow cone of light is passed okay then dark field microscopy if it is object is pale so if the background is dark you can easily the contrast possible okay so the light rays are scattered by the specimen entered the objective lens generally what is the normal one only scattered light entering the objective lens whereas in the normal one main light through the aperture it is going and focus on the object okay the specimen appears light against the dark background that is the dark field microscopy so it increases the contrast and enable the observations for more detail so this is under the dark field microscopy so just observe the in the dark field how they are creating the dark field in the center it is dark they are putting some dark field stop that is in the center you can observe that it is a dark complete dark so only through this the light is focused so what will happen so this is the field and and this dark field over that the pale specimen are kept and you can easily observe them okay then face contrast microscopy okay. already we discussed here the face plate is used okay and the light rays in the face produces the brighter image while light rays out of face produce darker image see you are out of frame why we are calling it as if you are frame photo frame or when you are taking a photograph so if you are not in a main frame so you are out similarly here so you are making that a outer one with the darker and the inner one with the lighter based on the adjustment with the light how they are entering in in the diagram you can easily see so this is the inverted face contrast microscope 
Why we are calling it as inverted microscope first? Why we are calling this as inverted microscope? Yes, stage is in. Where is stage? Here you can see stage. Okay, so the IPs are below the stage. Isn't it? Even though it is here, that is below the stage only the tube-like apparatus. The IPs. Generally, IPs above the stage we will see. Okay, so this is in the dissection microscope for easily keeping that and the condenser, face ring, everything will be below. But here it is above. Okay, so inverted microscope and in that you can see a face plate. To show the face plate only, they are keeping like this. This is a face plate. You can adjust. So there is a ring-like structure and through the rings the light are passed and it may be a, into different kind so that it makes the contrast possible okay so it is called with the help of the face plate they are making the different images in of different thickness okay so then there is another one with the same concept contrast concept itself so it is called differential interference contrast microscope so this is not much used in the cell biology even though it is there for various type of other one. So here the fluorescence microscope, everything is used. And here they have the two different uh, spectrums. Okay, modified Wollstone prism. Generally, the prism principle is used. What we are seeing as a small one, but here the two beams are traveling in two different directions. Are you able to see that as like a DNA helix? Two beams are going in two different directions and then it is converged in the light to the eyepiece then you can see the specimen so okay this is one of the microscope available that is enough then what is the principles of face microscopy okay what what how the rays are able to present in the face light rays then how they are out of face are you able to see first wavelength and the second waves the waves of both rays in phase, rays out of phase. What you are seeing the observation? Just to see that closer you can see and tell. Rays out of phase, upper, rays in phase, the crust. The crust is important. Just to see that the crust is more converged and then they are able to give the good uh, image, the light passing. Okay. And just ray deviated by the specimen one fourth of the wavelength of out of phase. And deviated here it is half wavelength out of phase. Okay. So one fourth. So in that case it will give you a closer picture. Okay, and then depending upon this, you can make a different contrast, different thicknesses. You can see a cell wall or epidermal layer. You can also see the vascular bundle. Or if you are taking a cell, you can see a plasma membrane. At the same time, you can see a nucleus under different contrast. Okay, so this is the basis for contra uh, contrast face contrast microscope then fluorescent microscope okay so by the name itself it is self explanatory what is fluorescence what is fluorescence i think ladies should know fluorescent color you are selecting for your dress isn't it what is that are the painters then fluorescent painting Fluorescent colors are used for painting. They glow at the dark. Am I right? They glow at the dark. Okay, so here they are go and bind to a particular organelle and easily it can be differentiated from other. Okay, the, for example, Janus green is added. So it is added to the, it go and specifically bind to the mitochondria 
so that easily differentiated from other organelles and when the light is very less even then you can easily absorb the fluorescent colors okay some of them naturally fluorescent can you tell any one naturally fluorescent it emits light naturally yes yes somebody is telling huh phytoplasma phytoplankton okay have you observed the firefly min mini puchi okay at the abdomen they emit light okay that is light but fluorescence also comes from certain specimen that is they are uh, giving a different colors when the light enters in that okay bright colors so this is used for staining okay and also immunofluorescence used for pathogens that is specific fluorescent material tagged with a certain material that is you know the key and lock hypothesis enzyme and key and lock hypothesis for what enzyme and substrate isn't it can you are very good in chemistry am i right enzyme key and lock hypothesis okay enzyme substrate complex similarly antibody antigens okay so in that if you tag one with the particular fluorescent color you can see a fluorescent images all other fields are not visible but your chromosomes alone are able to see if you are doing with the fluorescent staining okay so like that it is possible okay so four kinds of light microscopy in that bright field dark field phase contrast as well as the mrsk you can see the variations between that then immunofluorescence also that is here the fluorescent dye is added to the antibody then wherever the antigen is present the antibody go and bind so what happens after binding that part is give the fluorescence easily you can detect where the antigen is particularly present is it clear just observe the red color and green color green color are the fluorescent bodies the red color is antibodies so they carry the fluorescent dye and when the cell is present wherever that particular antigen is present this antibody go and bind and you can easily observe under the microscope okay so right this is immunofluorescence okay then confocal microscope in the light microscope itself confocal microscope so here also the fluorescent dyes are used but their resolution is increased using the uv lasers because the emitted light passes through the very very minute pin hole aperture so that the image is visualized or constructed as a 3d image and then digitized images you can get it in case of confocal microscope just we'll see how so here the lasers are used to scan the specimen create a high resolution high magnification both are high sometimes the magnification may be high the re resolution may not be high but in this case both resolution as well as magnification is high okay and so the selection by scanning the specimen and creating the section so that you can build the 3d image and without any physical uh, destruction and here you can observe the living cells okay or embryos marked with some dyes fluorescent dyes okay here they can reach up to the uh, magnification of 2000 x up to that all the optical microscopy what is the x magnification possible 1000 x so here improvement okay 2000 x so this is the diagram how the detector is taking the digitized image so you can see a first focal plan where the specimen is kept and through the objective lens here the laser is uh, treated then because of the, and then it 
pull, the laser goes through the pinhole and there is a mirror and with that they are able to make an image and with the confocal pinhole so it is connected to the detector the detector has the digitized image so this is in case of confocal okay what is the electron microscopy okay what is time is it we'll finish it hmm? 20 another 10 minutes we'll finish okay so electron microscopy so here everybody know the accelerated electrons are used instead of light energy okay and through which they make the digital image the magnification limit is so good that is 10000x to 1 1000x okay and we can view bacteria virus internal structures cell structures molecules larger atoms so everything it is possible and resolving power also closer than 200 nanometer if there are just uh, placed 200 nanometer distance you can easily distinguishable okay and but only one disadvantage is since because you are passing the electron that may kill the cells you can't see the live cells always you have to make the fixatives everything and prepare the specimens after that only in a slight form you can observe under the transmission electron microscope okay so then there are two transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope both you are going to see in the last practical class we have in nanotechnology department both the microscope are available transmission electron microscope as well as scanning electron microscope what is the transmission in the electron microscope what is the principle what is the difference between light microscopy and the electron microscopy okay so just if you take that in the electron microscopy the electron gun is present that is the source and then the condenser lens then condenser aperture through that the rays coming then it hit the sample then they have the objective lens so with the help of the objective aperture so the immediate lens and the projective lens makes the image to occurring in the fluorescent screen so this is the main part of electron microscopy so in that the main instead of light we are using the electron okay so that easy high resolution as well as the magnification so in the case of the tem it passes the electron through a thin specimen and the light pass through the specimen uh, the electrons pass back and forth through the microscopes vacuum chamber so that only it is bigger in size so this is like a table top recently come but earlier if you observe that one room is entire room is allotted for transmission electron microscope very big beam of electrons will come and in that the completely covered with a vacuum chamber okay and it is stronger than the same microscope up to 1 nanometer resolution and 500000x okay so just observe it looks like a ra rocket launching pad okay so it is just to observe the specimens at a very very good scale final image in a fluorescent screen how best you can observe that particular object for most of the viruses they are using the transmission electron microscope to observe the various characters and also it also gives what is the composition of that particular in the head capsule the dna rna or the proteins what are they so everything it can be attached to another uh, apparatus and then see that how best you can see that then scanning electron microscope the image is scanned okay and the the specimen is kept on a kept on a stage in a vacuum chamber which uh, removes the electron inhibiting air to aid in the acceleration okay and this makes up to 10 nanometers resolution and magnification of 30000x whereas the tem 5 lakhs or 
so this is only 30000 x but on the surface you are not processing anything you are just taking even you are uh, just to take a hair and keep it under the surface in a slide and uh, even up to keratin pigment you can observe up to 30000 x okay so the cells the cells are present in your hair at the bottom these are very very small cells okay so so that only the hair is used as one of the evidence for crime cases how they identify a person with a, just a small removed hair at the bottom there is a cell so you can extract the dna from that and identify a person based on their dna okay so so you go and plug your hair and see the cell whether you are having that eh? and okay so that is the most important even for dogs or whatever okay so it is a so this is sample you can observe that electron gun is coming and it forms a beam and through the condenser lens it go and scan the coil and on the objective lens the magnifications everything is controlled and the scans are generated and they are displayed amplified and then give it as a bigger image okay same image as observe that this is a very very small organism but you can see that how best how brilliant they are able to take the various stages of the fungus aspergillus or the paramecium or streptococcus bacteria so everything the same images it is on the surface but on the inner details you wanted to see that you have to go for temp okay right then the last one is probe microscopy okay it magnifies more than Hundred million times, okay. Hundred million times. So in that there are two important one advancement scanning tunneling microscope or atomic force microscope. The scanning probe microscope or tunneling microscope less than one nanometer resolution you are able to keep it as like here also the probe is attached. and it scans to a particular uh, specimen and it measures via the laser and send the information to photodiode and then convert it into digital image this is also used in nano scale and the cells and molecules are studied with the help of this microscope scanning probe microscope okay so just you can see a dna as well as the enzyme how best they are able to take a photograph with the help of a scanning probe microscope so how how you are saying it is a dna it is a protein or the enzyme the probe is attached a particular part go and bind specific to dna specific to protein so that can be imaged Okay, so the probes are different types. So don't bother about that. It may depend upon your molecule. You can use the different kind of probes and then attach to that the colored probes. Okay, with the fluorescent colors, everything it is there with a short sequence. There is a in the DNA means a probe is a complementary DNA. A always pair with P. C always pair with G. so like that you take a fragment you attach that fragment with a fluorescent tag or a probe okay then wherever the complementary sequence is there go and bind in the specimen so and that shows a double double helix double stranded dna so that can be realized with this specimen okay so there is an last one x ray microscopy so that uses the electromagnetic radiation in the x ray and x ray is allowed on the sample and so the magnification is done there is a lens which was recording in the case of ccd camera 
okay so this is the principle through the x ray they are passing so this is called x ray microscope exposes the film okay x ray how they are taking they are allowing your x ray x rays to see a scan the particular part so if this part is to be scanned so immediately they will ask you to keep like this and the x rays passes through that and they on the other side the image will be done and that is taken in a what black colored sheet is in a normal one so here what they are doing they are recording in a ccd camera that object image how it is so they record in that and then they will give it as a digital image okay so it is possible this is the x-ray microscopy as i told the last one is atomic force microscopy just you know the name atomic force microscopy is used to study the atoms which are present in the different molecules okay and in that the reflected laser beam are able to give the uh, various type of uh, cantilever and which are acting as a probe and with the probe you can scan the sample and you will get a bigger picture like this so this is the highest advancement now atomic force microscopy but is it possible to take our uh, finger and then observe under a uh, atomic force microscopy it is not possible the finer the very very small very thin objects so you have to make a preparation and then observe some 1 lakh times magnification so if you magnify 1 lakh times our finger it looks like uh, the um, higher elevate the sorry it is a high resolution image than the elephant's leg am i right 1 lakh times uh, higher image similarly you have to see that what is the relative size and also always when you are drawing the diagram or when you take a photograph or when you are scanning some of the specimens you have to make it as how many x magnification okay how much resolution you are able to take it okay now it is in pixels in camera okay how much pixels you have used and what type of camera used same thing in the microscope you have to write it how much magnification you have observed because if you are comparing two different object and two different magnification if you are saying this is bigger and this is smaller you are committing a mistake okay under the same magnification how it looks like so that is the most important one okay